Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Tomoko and I'm the program coordinator at the Japan Foundation Los Angeles. Today we are presenting the ever evolving Japanese soul food. This will be our seventh year to team up with Table for Two USA to present Onigiri Action Campaign supportive event. Mayumi Uejima Carr, the president of the Table for Two USA is here with us tonight and she will talk about this year's campaign after this introduction. We have another special guest tonight, Yusuke Nakamura, the president of the Onigiri Association, joining from Japan. He will talk about the fascinating history, facts, and the recent trends about onigiri, and he will answer your questions after his talk. Following the Q&A, Yumi Komatsudaya from Table Food to USA will show you simple steps to make both a traditional onigiri and a unique state theme onigiri. Before I pass on the mic to Mayumi-san, I would like to make a quick housekeeping announcement. This webinar is being recorded. Everyone's mics are muted and cameras are turned off. Please submit your questions by typing in the Q&A box. The recording of this program will be posted on, your, on our YouTube channel at the later date. Now, please enjoy the program. Mayumi-san, onegaishimasu. Konbanwa, nice to meet you all. I'm Mayumi from Table for Two. I'm joining from San Diego. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So I'd like to talk about Table for Two and what you can do by using onigiri. Okay, let me share my screen. So Table for Two is a nonprofit organization started in Japan in 2007 and came to the US in 2010. So our mission is to tackle this global food imbalance. So in this world, about 1 billion people don't have enough food. On the other hand, about 2 billion people have other health issues related to unhealthy eating. So as a solution, we provide healthy school meals to children in need, and also we provide food education, uh, teaching healthy eating. So we have two programs and two campaigns. So to provide school meals, uh, we have meal sharing program. So we partner with any place selling food. So they sell something healthy item as table for two meal. And then 25 cents from the proceeds will be donated to provide one school meal to a child in need. And we have a full campaign that we're gonna explain. Uh, I'm gonna explain more after this. And we have, um, food education program. So our core program is called Wa Shokuiku, Learn, Cook, Eat Japanese. So this is a combination of two Japanese words. First one is called Wa Shoku, Japanese food. Second one is Shokuiku, food education. So we combine these two words, it's called Wa Shokuiku. And students like kids to adults learn about healthy eating through Japanese food angle. So they make um, very basic Japanese food by using locally available ingredients. And we have a spring campaign called Edamame Champ and it's promote healthy eating by focusing on like, edamame and soy and includes like fun chopstick competition by using edamame. And I hope you can join this spring campaign next year. So a few days ago, October 16th is a World Food Day it's a day set by the United Nations and people around the world over 150 countries celebrate this day, like think about food and take action. So to celebrate this day, Table for Two has been doing this onigiri action uh, every fall. So change the world with onigiri, rice balls. So this is seventh year and we are very excited to this again. So how it works is very simple. So you make onigiri and before you finish eating onigiri, you take a photo and you post that uh, photo on our campaign website or your own social media like Facebook, Instagram with hashtag onigiri action. 
And each post can bring five school meals to children in need. So how it works is it's free to participate. So you can post as many as you want. You can post like 100 onigiri photo posts. And then each time like our generous partner organization will donate for school meals. So we have a goal to bring 1 million school meals this year. And I hope you can join this campaign. And since 2015, we've been providing 5.4 million school meals, and we have received Sustainable Development Goals Award from the Japanese government. And thanks to all of your support. So why onigiri is, uh, Nakamura-san is going to explain more, but it's a symbol of love and care. It's a rare food that you make with your hand. So many Japanese people have memories around onigiri. So my mom, my grandma used to make this for me. So it's a very warm, like comfort food. So we want many people to make onigiri and think about children who need help, put a lot of love into your onigiri and join this action. So now I'd like to show you a short video uh, explaining how to join onigiri action. Onigiri action. You can take a photo with this onigiri, or you can make a pose like this, or like this, or onigiri mask like this, or crochet onigiri, or you can hug onigiri, or you can be onigiri, or <laughs> so these are my kids who grew up with onigiri and you can see how much they love onigiri so um, they explain uh, how to join so you can take a photo of actual onigiri or you can just make onigiri shape or drawing art like anything onigiri-ish photo is okay and how to post is that we have a campaign website this is the url and when you post, you put your address. It could be just California or LA. And the photo will be placed on the map. So we can make an onigiri photo map. So every year we have photos from like over 50 countries. And on social media, if you go to Instagram, Facebook, and search hashtag onigiri action, you can find so many onigiri photos. And switch to Instagram, it's fun, just fun to see the photos. You can find like cute photos like these. Or like these days, I can I see many Halloween theme onigiri. And then many schools, like elementary schools to colleges, organize many onigiri action events. And this year, sometimes they do outdoor events and sometimes they make uh, onigiri ads. So please check this out and post your own photo as well. And we support children in East Africa, Southeast Asia, and also here in the US. So here in the US, we support six schools to have healthier school meals. Usually healthier school meals cost more and we are helping the funding gap. And in East Africa, we provide school meals like this. So one onigiri photo can bring five meals like this. So you can see how happy they are. And then the impact of school meals is very big. And by having school meals, more children come to the school and attendance rate went up. And also students can more focusing on like study, like classes. So then graduation rate went up. So it's been a significant impact. So now, um, I wanna introduce our fun theme this year in the US. Uh, we have a theme called Unite the States with Onigiri. So this year we want, we encourage everybody from all the states to join this Onigiri action with 
unique um, state onigiri photos. So the definition of state onigiri is that something you can use state specific ingredients like spam musubi from Hawaii or New York is famous for bagel. So you can make bagel theme onigiri or you could take a photo in front, in front of something uh, symbolic place like capital that could be DC onigiri. And if you like Dodgers or Padres, you can wear that uniform and take a photo with onigiri. That could be California. So that's a fun to think about your own state onigiri theme. And whenever you post, please add um, hashtag onigiri action plus hashtag state onigiri. So we will select the best ones and there'll be a prize, including um, Zojiri's very nice rice cooker or uh, this very cute onigiri action t-shirt. So we're looking forward to seeing very creative onigiris. So this actually onigiri action t-shirt is on sale and there's a foodie and caps and water bottle. And then each purchase, actually, uh, all the proceeds will be donated for school meals. So you can bring 30 school meals by purchasing t-shirts. So if you're interested in check this out, I'm gonna send the link after this. Okay, I think that's um, introduction of table for two and onigiri action. So now you will learn all about onigiri. Deba, Nakamura-san, onegaishimasu. Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Yusuke Nakamura, and I am the president of an organization called the Onigiri Association. The Onigiri Association works to spread Japanese food culture through Onigiri, not only in Japan, but also over the world. We talked about onigiri on TV and radio. Uh, it's me. Uh, the published books. And we are also active in giving lectures and events. Mm. <clears throat> For example, we demonstrated onigiri as the Expo mirror. Here are some of thoughts about the event. Today, I would like to talk about the roots of Japanese food onigiri. An onigiri rice bowl in English is a palm-sized piece of rice with a filling inside, topped with salt and wrapped with nori, uh, nori seaweed, which is seaweed, uh, sea vegetable. When you think of palm-sized Japanese food, which rice attached to it, you may think of sushi. Sushi is a dish made by rice seasoned with vinegar, sugar, and salt and then pressing mainly sliced raw fish on top of the rice, which is then eaten with soy sauce. Onigiri is a dish in which rice is lightly seasoned with salt and various ingredients are pressed inside. Also, uh, it is eaten with a soy sauce. Baseball player Shohei Otani of Angels also built up strong body in high school by eating onigiri in between practice. 
had been six feet one inches tall and weighed 145.5 pounds. But year and a half later, he was six feet four inches tall and weighed 189.6 pounds and threw 99 miles, the fastest speed in the history of high school and amateur baseball. At the Tokyo Olympics, there was scenes of many athletes eating onigiri. For Japanese people, onigiri is soul food and has been loved as a portable food, nutritional food, and supplementary food. Today, I would like to explain the history and function of onigiri. Onigiri has a long history, and even though it is a dish, fossils have been unearthed. This is said to be from the Yayoi period, about 2300 to 1700 years ago. I want you to look at this. Uh, right hand side, you see unearthed onigiri. And asked onigiri. And when you are left hand side, this is explanation of this onigiri. And this is onigiri. And this is onigiri written in Japanese character. Onigiri. Onigiri. It seems that Japanese people have been eating onigiri since that time. In Japan, rice is considered sacred, and there is an annual festival called Ninamesai to give thanks for the harvest. This hostel must have been an offering or something. Onigiri also appears many stories. In the first chapter of the Tale of Genji, Kiritsubo no Maki, the Tale of the Kiritsubo, Onigiri appears in the story of Hikaru Genji's first sources. At that time, Onigiri was prepared for aristocratic banquets and served mainly to low ranking officials. Later, during the Japanese Civil War and Warring States period, onigiri was used as rewards and rations for soldiers. Even in the Kamakura period, 1185 to 1333, about 800 years ago, the victors of the Civil War distributed onigiri. Rice was precious, and pickled plums were treated like medicine. So it must have been like a reward. There were about 200,000 of them. At that time, the samurai ate onigiri as a portable meal. About 200 years later, in the Muromachi period, 1333 to 1573, a scene of onigiri being made was depicted in the Shuhanlong Emaki. At that time, onigiri was shaped like an egg. This is shaped like an egg. Um, the right man making an onigiri.
in the war is warring states period of 1467 to 1615, which follows the Muromachi period, onigiri became important food for soldiers. It was also around this time that preserved foods such as senbei, rice crackers in English, and miso paste, soybean paste in English, became popular and evolved. In the Edo period, 1603 to 1868, peace prevailed and roads such as the Tokaido Highway were built and onigiri became a portable food for travelers. Um, this is one of the works by Hiroshige, known for this ukiyo-e print. It depicts common people happily eating onigiri on their travels. Mm. <clears throat> In the later half of the Edo period, rice began to be eaten by the common people. Onigiri also appeared as a dish at hanami, cherry blossom viewing, and even for the common people. In Byori Hayashina, a book published in 1801, A portable bento box for cherry blossom viewing was proposed. And the bottom chair of the Warigo bento, Warigo bento, uh, shaped like a stack of bento wooden boxes, was filled with onigiri. She will do. <clears throat> Is Meiji era, 1885, bento shops started selling bento as train stations to coincide with the opening of the railroad. The first bento sold as stations in Japan consisted of two onigiri, two, two onigiri, two onigiri and pickles. Wrapped in bamboo wrapping, bamboo wrapping. But it was expensive and did not sell well. After that, stores specializing in onigiri appeared on the scene, but it wasn't until 1974 when 7-Eleven landed in Japan. The onigiri began to be sold nationwide in earnest. In 1974, when 7-Eleven arrived in Japan, onigiri began to be sold in convenience stores in the same way as sandwiches. And many people began to pick them up. Until then, onigiri had often been a home cooked meal, home cooked meal, but around 1978, the current film type onigiri began to be sold at convenience stores and became popular as lunch for working people. Today, billions of onigiri are made and consumed in Japan every year. They are very popular. <clears throat> there are four types of on onigiri. Triangular, round, bell, or bar. Tri triangular, round, bell, bar. 
uh, the triangular, the triangular uh, shape is said to be in the mount, shape of Mount Fuji. Some people believe that the triangular shape of the, of the onigiri represents Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. The ingredients used in onigiri vary from meat to fish to vegetables. In many cases, specialties from each region of Japan are used. And local onigiri from all over Japan. Mm. <clears throat> 47. A popular, popular item at convenience stores is tsuna mayo onigiri, tsuna mayonnaise onigiri. I heard that canned tuna was born in the United States. The combination of Japanese onigiri, canned tuna, and mayonnaise has become the most popular onigiri in Japan. Recently, many variations of onigiri have been introduced, such as stick-shaped onigiri and sandwich-like onigiri. Uh, stick-shaped onigiri, the ingredient on the left is fillet cutlets. Mm, fillet cut. That like is chicken number. Chicken number. Yeah. And uh, sandwich shaped onigiri, similar to spam rice balls. Eggs and chicken. Yeah. Mm. And bite sized onigiri, uh, roast beef. Salmon, 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 and shrimp on top. This is tuna mayo. Mascarpone. The rice used in onigiri is a food that contains vitamins, minerals, dietary fiber, and su surprisingly, a lot of protein. Furthermore, it helps with water intake. The water content of bread is 38%, while 57% of onigiri is water. It is a good idea to eat rice to keep your water intake in mind. Also, as rice co cools down, cools down, the starch is converted into resistant starch. This resistant starch is not easily digested and absorbed. and also increase calorie consumption. By being difficult to absorb, it helps prevent blood sugar levels from spiking. When blood sugar level rises, insulin is secret, secreted, but insulin has a has the ability to synthesize fat. Onigiri has resistant starch, which keeps the blood sugar level from rising too fast. Making it harder for insulin to be secreted, which in turn suppresses fat synthesis. Mm. 
some people may be concerned that carbohydrates can raise blood sugar levels. But rather than feeling hungry without eating, it is better to eat onigiri to increase satisfaction, which may lead to a successful diet. Currently, onigiri is trying to spread its wing around the world. In Berlin, Germany, a German rice balls company called Rice Up, Rice Up, Rice Up, is gaining popularity. And in Germany, there is also a movement for Japanese people to start their own rice ball shops. And the Onigiri Association is supporting them. Onigiri shops are also starting to appear in Rome, Italy, England, and the United States. I believe that onigiri as sandwich sandwiches were in the past will become popular as a portable and nutritional food around the world. It seems that there are some onigiri shops in Los Angeles. So I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nakamura-san, uh, for such an informative lecture. And now we have a few minutes uh, for Q&A, and Ms. Saki McCarthy will help us go through the Q&A, each questions. Right. So the first question, what is the most popular onigiri ingre ingredients in Japan? What is your favorite onigiri ingredient? Nakamura-san, Nihon de ichiban ninki no aru gua nan de shouka? So shite Nakamura-san no ichiban oski na gua nan de shouka? Nihon de ichiban ninki ga aru no wa tsunamayo onigiri desu. So currently, the most popular uh, ingredient in the center of mm. onigiri is tuna and mayonnaise. The kate kate da to iron na mono ga takusan arimasu ne. Takusan no gozai o tsukau no de. Ma ichigai ni ichiban tiu no wa nai desu kere do mo convenience store de ichiban ninki wa tsuna mayo onigiri. Mo kore wa mo juu nen gurai zutto ichii desu. So tuna and mayonnaise, uh, the center as a center of onigiri, has been most popular for the last ten years. Although in the uh, households, it's a different story. There are so many different ingredients, and it depends on the family. The boku ga suki na no wa umeboshi to yushigure. Yushigure. Diyaki kana. So my uh pop my uh, most favorite is umeboshi, which is a uh, pickled plum, and also yushigure. It's a uh, like a beef, like thinly sliced beef, uh, that's uh, seasoned kind of sweet and tangy, like soy sauce and sugar. Not worry, maybe maybe. And also, I also like shrimp. Shrimp, tenmusu desu ne. Tempura desu ka? Tenmusu っていうのがあるんですよ。あの、天ぷらの、天ぷらのエビ、えっと、フライのエビをおにぎりに入れるっていう。So, that's when you would put tempura or、uh, shrimp inside the omusubi. うんうん。ここでじゃあ、その下がおにぎりとおむすびなんですね。あ、そうなんですよ。
おにぎりとおむすびの違い。We'll、add, so the second question, what's the difference between おにぎり and おむすび、うん、えっと、どちらも同じです。They are the same. ただし、言葉としてはおにぎりの方が古いです。However, おにぎり is the vocabulary that's even more ancient. おむすびは、えー、これなんて言っていいんだろうな。もうそのまま日本語で言いますね、さっきさん。はい、あの、宮中、あの、都の貴族の女言葉として使われていたようです。おむすび came out from women that were in the palace。どのぐらい昔ですかねもう、不動期の頃だから、もうな、奈良時代とかなんですけど,ど、どれぐらいの平安時代か、かなり昔。ということは、1800年とか、1000… もっと前ですね。うん。2000年前ぐらいですかね。Probably like. 前じゃないですね。ちょっと待ってくださいね。Um, probably like over 1800 years, like even older. 現代の物語かなだそういう意味では。現代物語ということは1800年。その辺ぐらいですね。あ、1008年ですね。Oh, so、uh, probably the tale of Genji era, so、uh, about a thousand years ago. A thousand. Years ago, yes. So, this is like from a thousand eight, something like that. And t h e third question What are ways onigiri were preserved back in the day? Mukashi wa do you who ni omusubi omu onigiri wo hozon shi mashtaka? Mukashi wa onigiri wo hanso sase te senbe jo ni shi mashta. So, in order to preserve the onigiri, they would、right. dry,、um, dry up the onigiri and it would be senbe. Senbe is a rice cracker.、Um, so, that's the way they would preserve the omusubi. The samurai to ka ninja, the tabibi to, wa, so, no, onaka ka hetta, so, re, wo, mizu de, modo, shi, tari, to, ka, no, naka de, modo, shi, tari, to, ka, shi, tari, to, ka, shi, tari, to, ka, And when that uh, travelers, uh, samurai and ninja, when they get hungry, they would immerse that into some water、uh, when they get hungry and then eat that as omusubi. Eh, hi. Yonban me wa, これは table for two. Table for two. Eh, to. 答えられますかねえっと、今までに玄米とか、えー、麦ご飯でおにぎりを作ったことがありますか、えー、昔は白米ではなかったんじゃないでしょうかで、えー、今後、そうです、ミックス、混合米とか、えー、玄米の方が栄養価が高いと思うんですけれども、えー、で、えー、スライドではおにぎりは白米しかない感じです。スライドを見た感じでは白米しかない感じです。あそんなことないです。なあの日本でも雑穀とかスーパーフードの,あのお米、雑穀を使ってみんな健康系のおにぎり食べてます。うん。Actually, yes, in Japan, they do、uh, use a mixed rice and also the、um, um, brown rice, like all sorts of rice, because it is really more nutritious. Oh, and I'm sorry, the、um, question in English was Does tea,、uh, table for two ever make onigiri with kenmai? Or Mugi Gohan, I imagine that onigiri of early, earlier r l y e ages was not polished white rice. And we also know that brown rice and mixed grains are more nutritious. Just、mm-hmm. curious about the information given. Imagine,、uh, given. Images, images certainly seem to lead one to believe that onigiri must be polished white rice. But my children have enjoyed Genmai and Mugi Gohan onigiri for their entire lives. Thank you for the presentation today. Ah, nice, very nice comments. This n e Hi, yes, so、um, in Japan, they do make the、uh, onigiri with the mixed rice as well. However, that,、uh, the wheat,、uh, it's, it would be kind of like difficult for them to stick together. So you have to mix the wheat with the rice、mm-hmm. to make it into the ball. 
Mm, to, tsugi wa. Okay, so the next question. What are the benefits of pickled plum? I cannot mm. eat it, but I know it is important to onigiri. Eh, umeboshi no 栄養素は何でしょうかあの私はちょっとあまり食べられないんですけれどもあのおにぎりにはとてもよく使われていると思います重要だと思いますというあ質問ですね梅干しのポイントは、うんえっと、大きくまあ大きくあるとしたら2つありますと1つは、うん、梅干し自体があのすごあの保存性が高いですなのでおにぎりで持ち歩いても食材が傷まないというのが1つ目。で、2つ目はクエン酸が入っているので、疲労回復につながります。Okay, so there are two benefits、uh, for using the、uh, umeboshi in the onigiri. One is that it becomes, it works as a preservative. So rice and、uh, seaweed, they would be、uh, fresh when you eat the onigiri. And、uh, クエン酸というと、えークエン酸 So,、um, it has a benefit of making,、uh, making your body not tired.、Uh, it's actually, actually, you get tired, but then、um, it would energize your body. クエン酸っていうと、ストリートアシッド。えー、ちょっと待ってください。今もう一度おっしゃっていただけますかえっ、ー、と、はい、クエン酸 is、um, D-I-T-E-R-I-C アシッドじゃないですか。うん。かなクエン酸がちょっと英語でちょっとわからないんですけど。クエン酸。よいしょ。えっ、ー、と、クエン酸。うんいやさえ。もう一度スペル言っていただけますか ?G-I-G-R-I-G。C-C-A-B-C の C。C-I-T。RIC. Ah, yes, citric acid.、Yes. Citric acid.、Um, mm -hmm. So, umeboshi, the pickled、uh, plums, contain citric acid that、mm -hmm. would、uh, re energize your body. So,、mm -hmm. two great benefits. Hi, eto, mitsu, ah, mitsugi wa, nihongo desen. Nakamura san wa, America de donna onigiri ga hayaru to omaimaska. America jin ni osme no onigiri te arimaska. Uh, what do you think would be popular in the United States in terms of the、um, ingredients inside the onigiri? And what would recommend? Niku ke ga ichiban ya pari in janai desu ka ne. Ano, honto ni steak to ka irete mo oishi, ano, niku o irete mo oishi mono na node, niku ke to, sore kara ya pari karada ni kino se no onigiri, saki no. あの食物繊維がたっぷり入っている雑穀のおにぎりとかそういう健康機能性の高いおにぎりの、まあ、2つかなというふうに思ってます。So I'm thinking maybe、um, of course you know maybe that some kind of meat、uh, would be popular in the US and even if you put steak inside of onigiri it's really、um, tasty and delicious. And also, you know,、uh, it's becoming, people are becoming more health conscious lately. So, something that's got a lot of fiber,、uh, you know, mixed rice,、uh, the brown rice, onigiri,、um, something that's more nutritious.、Uh, and also, you know, in terms of diet,、um, mm -hmm. I think people would be uh, for more, uh, that those would be more popular because、mm -hmm. of the health consciousness of the, today's age.、Mm -hmm. uh, the height. 次に行きます。あ、結構。Where can parents purchase mini packets of protein or vegetables to insert into the center of onigiri? I am envisioning packets similar to ketchup packet size. なんかこう、ケチャップのこんな小さいようなあのこうパッケージがあるんですけども、そういう何かこう、ミニパッケージみたいなので、おにぎりにプーッと入れるといいようなものがどっかに売ってませんか、えー、おにぎりの具の中にってことですよね。具になるものですね。ケチャップ、あ、ケチャップ、スッと刺して入れられたらいいんじゃないかそうそうそう、いい考えですね。いいアイディアですね。That's a great idea. <笑>日本にはあるんですけど、あ、そうなんですね。まあ、あの、ポンと入れるだけでおにぎりができちゃうとか。
、で、あの、防災食で、あの、長期保存ができて、いつでも水だけであったかいおにぎりができるっていうのもあるんですけど、アメリカには売ってないんじゃないかな。なかそういう意味では、ケチャップとか、あとタルタルとかオーロラソースとか、ああいうソース系を中に入れるのは美味しいかもしれないですね。うん。Yeah, so、um, we do have those in Japan.、Uh, those are more for the emergency、um, when there are some natural disaster or something, like when people have to、um, evacuate. So then they can just take those. So、um, those are in Japan, but here, maybe you can put like、um, tart tar tartar sauce.、Uh, you can mix that with something or. Aurora sauce, like some kind of steak sauce. You can even put those inside of the、uh, on, onigiri. Eh, hoka ni wa nai de shoka, daijobu desu ka ne? Okay.、Um, what regions of Japan produce, produce the、uh, oval shape? あのあの楕円形みたいなのどこで作りますか日本の,あの地域としては。My relatives were from Yamanashi and only made the oval, but in LA, I've only seen the triangle shape. あのロサンゼルスではあの三角のしか見たことがない。えー、で山梨市のにいる親戚たちは結構あのたこうあの、はい、こう楕円形の作ってくれるんですけれども、それって地域に関係ありますかに関係あります。Hmm. Great question.、Um, yes, the, those shapes are regional.、Hmm. えっとね、so, the west side, like Osaka area, they make the oval shape.、Hmm. The triangle is Kanto. And the triangular shape are mainly in the Tokyo area, Kanto. The、えっと、円盤型 is in the Tokyo area. 秋田とか青森とか。And the bale shape, Akita, Aomori prefectures, those are like、uh, northeast Japan.、うん、各地それぞれちゃんと理由があって形はあります。それはまたあの、And... 説明します。<笑>あ、今度ですか長くなるんですよ、ものすごく。<笑>ああ。えっと、えっと、タワラガベイルは、あの、お弁当、幕の内弁当。にあったんですねで大阪ってあの舞台を見る文化がすごく昔からあったのでそのた幕の内弁当を食べながら舞台を見てた人たちが、えっと、そのまんまえお弁当からおにぎりとして出してきたのがベール型のおにぎりです。So, Osaka area, uh... You know, since the old age, they had a、uh, culture to see the theaters. Like people would go see the theaters. And in, at the theaters,、uh, it was、um, the bale shaped omusubi were lined up in that、uh, bento box. And so that's why that's the shape that's popular in Osaka area.、Mm -hmm. hmm. Hi. Yeah. There are、uh, so many.、Uh, All reasons for each region, s but、uh, that will be very long. So, next time. The、えっと mm -hmm. White rice is not as nutritious as brown rice of haiga rice.、Oh, haiga rice. Is haiga. there any trend to use these for onigiri? Ah, sake hodo itta kanji desu ke no. Yeah, I think we already answered that. Yeah, we, they do,、um, we, we do use that in Japan. Uh, I signed it a little late. What does the word onigiri,、uh, onigi, onigiri mean? Is there a sweet onigiri or is it always savory? It's more shio kara desu ka? Sotomo amai no mo arimasu ka? Amai no mo arimasu. Yeah, there are some sweet ones too. De, ato wa? Eto, onigiri no to yu imi wa? Te de nigiru. Onigiri means to、uh, grab and also press, like you're pressing with the hand. That's why it's called onigiri. Nigiri. Nigiri、ね、so, nigiru is to grip on something or grab and grip on,、uh, uh, like really make it like tight. And so, o is like、uh, something you put. Uh, to have the respectful language. So, onigiri is more respectful、mm -hmm. version of nigiru. 
Uh, well, there are so many great questions. Sorry um, to interrupt, but there are so many great questions. But uh, maybe we have a couple more questions to answer. Okay. Um, so the next question What is the most unique or strangest onigiri you have eaten? なかまらさん、なんかあのどれが一番奇妙なおにぎりでしたか食べた中で。えっと魚介類なら香港で食べたザリガニ。So uh, crawfish onigiri in Hong Kong. Uh, so that was like something that we don't really see in Japan. で、あとはあの日本で食べたやつで言うと、え、熊と鹿。熊ですか? Uh, okay, so if we limit to Japan, I've eaten bear meat onigiri and also uh, deer meat, so Vincent uh, onigiri. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I've never heard that. Okay, uh, so next question. Onigiri ni au no mimono wa? What the drinks do go well? Uh, what, what would be the good pairing? With onigiri. Ma, miso shiru, ryokucha, green tea. Green tea and water. And water. And Nihon no sake. And sake, Japanese sake, rice mm. wine. Hmm. Eh, so na kanji in this kane, mada chikari maskane. Shitemasne. Mada in this kane. Okay, so probably the last one. What is the importance of the nori in onigiri? Nori wa doshite tsukun de shouka? Does it just contribute flavor or does it have significant health benefits too? Eh, nori ni wa eiyoso ga arun de shouka? Nanika. I've noticed some onigiri are covered in it and some don't. Toki-toki aru no to nai no ga arun desu kere domo nori ga. Have nori at all, oh, is it Oh, mostly just a preference thing. Thank you. Is it あの好みによるだけでしょうか。えっと、好みによりますが、えっと、なぜ海苔が作ったというと、おにぎりって形をギュッと握っちゃいけないんですよ、おにぎりって。優しく握んなきゃいけない。で、優しく握らなきゃい
um, you can find a train station, convenience store. And why? Because this is very accessible and also very popular making at home. And so I have right here, tuna, this is about five ounce. Can I drain it and make sure there is no uh, water in here? It's very important. You drain the liquid completely. And then also I have a soy sauce right here. About uh, one teaspoon if you are making at home. Um, I have one tablespoon mayonnaise. I'm using a Japanese mayonnaise. It has a little bit more eggy, very creamy. And then of course we have the nori right here. So by the way, nori, I cut it in small pieces. But if you haven't seen it, this is how it looks like. It's a big sheet. And then you basically um, cut uh, small strips. I like a big sheet of nori, but today I'm just showing you the traditional way. So I just cut about two inch wide. And then I'm gonna show you how to um, cut according to the size of your onigiri rice ball. Okay. All right, and by the way, this is called uh, yaki nori. Yaki means to roast. Nori is a seaweed. So it has been roasted once before. So it has a very nice aroma and it's, it's very crunchy. Okay, all right. And then here, it's a little tip. Um, my grandmother always used her hand to make a rice ball, but um, I'm actually um, joining you from New York City, it's almost bedtime, it's uh, 11 o'clock. So I wanted to have less cleaning and having this, um, you know, plastic wrap really helped me to have no mess in the kitchen. So I'm using the plastic wrap, uh, but if you don't wanna use any plastics, you can use parchment paper or you can use your own hands. Your hands are the best tool, so, and then of course, before you cook, you have to wash your hands, right? And then this is another great tool. I have a little bowl of water with um, a spoon. I'm gonna show you why I have this spoon later on, all right? Okay, so first and foremost, I'm going to mix the tuna and mayonnaise and soy sauce together, okay. So um, I like more soy sauce than the mayonnaise, but you can do, uh, you can just season according to your liking. So if you like more creamy, you can add more mayonnaise, or if you like a little spicy, you can add, uh, for instance, like Tabasco or Salacha. If you are living in the US, Salacha is very popular um, hot sauce. So I just quickly mix well together. And then do you know how much rice you should use to make a onigiri rice ball? So one thing to know is the size of your fist. So if you are an adult, you have a bigger hand, right? So just do like this and see how big you are aiming to make your rice ball. If you're a child, you have smaller hand. So your rice ball tend to be smaller and that's the right size, all right? Okay, and then another very important thing. So your rice needs to be warm when you make rice ball because uh, if it's too cold, uh, it doesn't stick together. So if you have a cold rice, I will recommend um, to put, in, uh, put the rice in a, a microwave for 30 seconds to a minute just to warm it up so that it's easy to form into the shape that you like. And um, I'm actually, uh, I'm originally from Tokyo area in Japan. So I grew up eating um, triangular onigiri, just like uh, Mr. Nakamura mentioned before. So uh, I'm going to show you the triangular tuna mayonnaise. Okay, so first I put the half uh, amount of the size of the fifth, uh, this is about the half cup of rice into this little teacup that I use. 
If you don't have a teacup, you can use any type of bowl and then you just put the plastic over it and then uh, you place the rice like this. And uh, I show you this little spoon. So this is to make an indentation. So watch me how I make a little indentation. So this little hole is where the tuna mayonnaise sits. So just make a little um, hole indentation like this. And then let's put the mayonnaise, uh, tuna mayonnaise about, I like a lot of filling. So I will put about one tablespoon. If you want to go crazy, you can put as much as you want, but um, appropriate amount is about one tablespoon like this. Okay, so the next process is to cover the tuna with half cup of the rice. So just like this. So you cover the tuna. And now you can really see inside. And this is what you're looking for. Okay. So watch me how I form the rice into the shape of triangular. So I will go in to put those edges together just like this. And then just lift the plastic wrap. And then watch me how I twist just like this. And then a uh, lounge shape, the bowl size um, onigiri is also great, but we're going to make a little triangular. So after this, um, I am actually light hand uh, dominant. So I will make a triangular shape just like this or rooftop if you may say like this. And then my non-dominant hand is acting uh, acting like a cup to receive the ball like this, right? And then watch me. So Mr. Nakamura mentioned that uh, you should never, not never, but you are not supposed to push too hard. You have a gentle holding like this. So as you are making a rooftop shape like this, you turn a few times, turn like this, and then push. As I make a turn, I will gently push the rise into the triangular. If it's too hard, you can do this way. You have a flat surface, and then you just use your hands to make a triangular shape like this. And then sometimes you just push the top to make it flat. And then as you turn the rice ball a few times, it will slowly becoming like a triangular shape like this. Okay, so you can use your hands to form like this a few times, the rooftop, just remember the rooftop and turn rooftop, turn, rooftop, or you can place on a flat um, cutting board and then just use your hands to form into triangular just like I'm doing it and then push the top like this. Okay, uh, I think it looks good now, right? What do you think? So let's take the plastic wrap and see how it looks like. Okay, so don't worry if you try for the first time, it doesn't look like perfect triangular. And then also you can uh, buy a mold for onigiri making. Uh, if you go to Japanese store, you have a variety of different molds. It, it might be fun to try something like that too. Okay, so it looks good, right? So. Um, this is the, uh, the nori that we talked about. And look, this is the shiny side, and this is the left side. Can you, 
Can you tell the difference? So we wanted to look our nigiri very pretty and shiny, right? So I will put the shiny side facing out. And then there, there are a variety of different way to wrap your um, um, onigiri with the nori, but I'm going to show you the classic way. So I will place it in the middle, just like this. And then, um, so it's like a belt and I would just go this nori around on the bottom and come to the other side like this. And then you can do this way or you can cut in, in the same length as the front. So I'm going to just use my fingertip and gently cut. So it looks like an evenly placed. So like this. This side looks better. <laughs> what do you think? It's nice, right? Okay, so one done. We have two more to go. Okay, so I'm going to place this on the plate. Like this. All right, so the next one is the uh, uh, stay onigiri. And as I mentioned, I am um, currently living in New York City and everything but the bagel is very popular. It's very iconic breakfast here in New York City. And um, I'm going to turn this into onigiri. Okay, so um, I'm going to quickly go over the ingredients. I have the rice already made nice and warm. Remember, if your rice is too cold, just warm it up by microwave for a few seconds, a few minutes. And then I have the slice of uh, smoked salmon. This can be found anywhere at the grocery stores. Um, and I have this cream cheese. Um, there was a question before, what kind of sauce you should use? This might be very interesting version if you never try cream cheese with rice. Um, it's a actually very interesting but delicious combination. So I'm going to use this cream cheese. And then uh, just to have a Japanese flair, we don't want to forget about onigiri coming from uh, Japan. So we want to season with a little bit of soy sauce. And, um, and then this one, is the everything but the bagel seasoning. If you don't have this, you can use furikake sprinkles or um, if you wanna make your own uh, bagel seasoning, you can mix with uh, sesame seeds and salt and some garlic powder um, or onion powder, uh, whatever you find in the pantry, uh, that'll be great and then also, um, I'm using the nori sheet again. Okay, so this is the same concept, everyone. So I have the rice the rice ball um, just cover with the plastic wrap for easy cleaning. Okay, and then you, you remember how much rice I like to put is the size of your fifth, right? So I'm going to put, so this, my size is about one cup of rice. So I'm going to put the half cup of rice first, just like this. Okay. So, and then we're going to use this little a spoon again and then uh, remember if uh, the rice has a, a lot of starch so it's very sticky it's a good idea that your spoon is um, is uh, dip in the water so it doesn't stick okay and then if you're using your bare hand um, it's nice to have a little type of um, you just wet your hands in the water bath and then just shake it off a little excess water and then you could just uh, sprinkle a little salt 
So you are ready to um, form into the rice with your hand. Um, but I'm using for the easy cleaning method of um, saran wrap. Okay, so I'm going to make a little indentation here again. It's the same concept. Okay, so this is ready. And then I have a cream cheese and then the soy sauce. I'm going to quickly mix together. Okay, like this. And then uh, if your cream cheese is too, uh, too hard, you just leave it out out of the fridge for five minutes. It gets uh, softer naturally, so it's easy to um, just deal with it. Okay, so I mix it like very creamy texture. And I'm going to put half of the cream cheese in here where I made an indentation. Okay, now, okay, let's look at the salmon, smoked salmon I have. And then I'm going to just tear little pieces with my hand. Um, and then I will place the salmon on top of cream cheese, just like this. And if you like a lot of salmon, you go ahead and just top with a few layers of uh, salmon. And then I'm going to put the less of the cream cheese on top, like this. It might look kind of strange to you, but it's actually very good. And if you have sushi with the cream cheese, it's 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 um kind of popular filling also. So it's the same concept. So I just cover the filling with half cup of rice, just like this. And remember what I did before? Yes. So we put the, the edge of the plastic wrap together and then lift it up like this and then twist. Yes, you remember? It's the same method. It's very easy to make. And so this is already very good. It's If it's round, this is it but I'm going to show you the triangular again, just because it's, it's a great method to know. So remember, um, you use the uh, non-dominant hand as a cup, and then use your dominant hand as a rooftop. And you form gently like this, twist, the times as you twist, you form gently, the rooftop action like this. If it's too hard, again, you use the surface, the flat surface to form into the triangle just like this. And then if you just tap gently to make a flat on top, it's slowly becoming like triangular with no time. Okay, so a few times. It's easy, right everyone? So it's no trick. You just have to start making it at home already, right? Okay, so this looks perfect. And what I'm gonna do is to just sprinkle everything bagel seasoning to the plate. Yeah, it just looks, uh, looks like a frikake sprinkle, but smells like, um, Lots of garlic and um, onions, like a breakfast special. So I'm going to just use this surface, two sides, to just gently tap the sprinkle like this. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, leave it open on the bottom because I will wrap the nori. Okay. So like this, it has a very nice flavor. So two sides, I sprinkle the um, bagel mixture. You can use your frikake if you have at home. And then again, I'm going to use the nori belt to wrap around. So this is the bottom and that's the reason why I didn't put the sprinkle on the bottom. 
Okay, just like this. And then I will just use my fingertip to cut it. So this is the New York style bagel onigiri. And everyone, I have a little leftover. So I'm going to kind of garnish by using the leftover. So I will just make it little thin pieces like this. And then watch me as, uh, I'm, as if I'm making a little rose like this. This is very easy to make, right? So I would just place it on top like a flower, like that. What do you think? Is it good? Okay. Or even I can poke it in just to uh, let them stand like this. Looks very really nice, right? All right. The second one is done. I'm going to place on my plate. All right. Maybe this one is like standing up so you can see the bagel seasoning. All right. So the third one, everyone, this is coming to the end, unfortunately. But um, this is uh, this is the state onigiri for Los Angeles. Actually, I have the club stick. California roll is a um, very popular sushi roll, inside out roll, um, created in Los Angeles, California, uh, back in 1963. Do you know this is about 60 years old? Only 60 years old. But by um, 1980s, it exploded all over US and even um, imported to Japan. It become very popular. So this is a little different. I am going to put the nori inside, not outside, because California roll, the nori was hidden inside uh, this uh, chef from Tokyo Kaikan. Unfortunately, the restaurant is no longer existed in uh, Little Tokyo, but the chef came up with very creative way um, for American to start eating uh, sushi roll. And um, the chef decided to put the nori inside because uh, at that time, 60 years ago, nori was kind of scary. Nobody knows what that is. And People are kind of scared of eating raw fish. So the chef came up with using the imitation club, which is made from fish, but it doesn't look like fishy or taste too much fishy. So this is a great alternative for them to use at the time. And then also nourishi um, for America, it looks kind of scary. So he decided to uh, put it inside and load it uh, with the rice so that nobody noticed. So that's the concept of the background. Um, I'm going to use the leftover nori sheet in here. Okay, so I'm going to put the rice about one cup. And by now, you know how much rice you should use, right? So about the size of your fist. Okay, and then I'm going to use the fish stick. So um, commonly it comes in a little package like this. So just take the plastic out. And then this is like a little stringy, like a noodles. I'm just using my hands to break apart like this. Okay. And then, um, you know, onigiri rice bowl usually or always uh, no vinegar rice. We use the simple um, plain rice, but because this is the California roll concept, I'm going to use just a tiny bit of rice vinegar just to season. And then I add the salt. Okay, uh, you can also use mayonnaise or soy sauce, but uh, because we already use those um, seasonings, 
I just wanted to use something different. Okay, and then just mix that well, like this. Yeah, the color is very pretty, like this pink and white. And now uh, the avocado. So this is a little tip. I cut it and then open it and then uh, keep the seeds inside and then just store like this until I'm using it so that the color stays fresh like this. I'm using the spoon to scoop it up. I just cut the little um, line so that it's easy to scoop. So I cut fairly bigger um, pieces, but you can use smaller pieces if you like. Okay, and then with the nori, I'm just breaking them apart with my fingers, just small pieces, and I'm just going to sprinkle on top of rice and then mix all together very well. And yeah, it's very, color is very pretty and it's kind of unique, right? Okay, so I have the rice ball cup with um, plastic wrap over. And this one, I'm just going to put them all together like this. All right. So because I add all these ingredients, it become a little bit bigger size, but don't you worry, this is very good, half vegetable. So, okay, I will just do the same, lift the corners, four corners up. And then this one, I'm just gonna make simple round shape like this. Yeah, um, I don't know. I've been making triangular all my life, so it's naturally forming to triangular, everyone. But you can do the round very easy way. This is like all your imagination. There is no right or wrong making only do rice balls. So you just use your Im imagination to form into the shape you like. And then, yeah, this one coming pretty quick like that. What do you think? Yes? Okay. So I'm gonna take the plastic out. Oh, looks very good. Wow. What do you think? Isn't that fun? Okay. So everyone, I made three different one of your rice ball like this. I hope you Enjoy watching this and then hope you try any of those three at home. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching.